So this is a drinking food with, <laughs> with, with apparently dried marijuana on top. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of prawn, what planet did you get this from? <laughs> Why did it just fall off like that? That was too easy. It's gonna get you high this time. <laughs> but obviously this is like a black crab. It's like the spider of the ocean. Oh my what? gosh. Oh my Dude. goodness. So these are imported from Thailand. Yes. I feel like they got bigger in the time that they left. Everyone knows Thai food. Many people have heard of Isan food from the Northeast region of Thailand. And you might know it shares most of its DNA with Lao food. But do you know what it tastes like? And do you know why everyone's raving about it? And why it's credited for providing a lot of the punch, or maybe I should say elbow, that Thai food has? Let's head to Brooklyn and find out. Hit that like button and let's go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a very special Thai episode of Fun Bros Food. All right, right now we are outside of Zab Zab and they are considered New York's best Thai restaurant and one of the best Thai restaurants in all of America. They originated in Queens. This is their second location and they specialize in Isan food. Mm. All right, Brian, tell us about your spot, man, because you guys got, you know, written up New York Times, Time, you know, the publications. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, this is the true Isan flavor restaurant, that's what I call it, so. Uh, is, it, is it kind of like Isan on a level that New York hasn't seen before? I would say so, I would say so, yes. Hey man, Isan happens to be my favorite region <laughs> of Thai food, and I know they're all great, you know, north, south, east, west, central. What do you think about the title of one of the best Thai restaurants in America? Would you take it? I'll take anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you guys leading off round one here at Tab Tab? Uh, we got the duck lop, right? Mm. And a lot of people spell this larb, but it's actually more like L-A-A-A-P, right? Like a yes. lop. Okay, what am I looking at, Brian? Well, this is duck breast that we finally chop. Uh, we got duck liver, duck gizzard, and we have a fried duck skin on top. Oh my gosh, this is all different types of cooked duck, man. Is, is duck considered even more popular in Isan than other types of lob, or these are all very popular lab? Uh, well, Isan is popular with the duck lob in, in a, a region called Udon County. Mm. So. <laughs> Off rip, guys, the duck lob is a five out of five. Immediately, the ped is going crazy. I never thought I would like a dish so much that had duck gizzards in it. To be honest, I skipped the gizzards when it comes to the chicken. I mean, they're okay, I can do it, but this is the best gizzards I've had from a fowl. Okay, moving on to our other proteins here. Brian, what is this? This is fried duck kite. So it's basically, it's fried lemongrass, fried fish. Ooh. So this is a drinking food with, <laughs> with, with apparently dried marijuana on top. <laughs> they got, it's gonna get you high this time. <laughs> Pla da kai. Eating that fried dill is really interesting too. I've never had something that kind of feels like twigs or weeds, but it tastes really good. While traveling's fun, man. You can just travel to Zab Zab. All right, our next dish is here at Zab Zab. We have the world famous crying tiger steak and the world famous somtam. But this uh, papaya salad is done a little bit differently, is right? Is that tamaku? The raw shrimp, the raw oyster, Ooh. the black crab, the marinated black crab. Oh, oh. I'm gonna shuck it together. <laughs> That's it. Zab Zab right here. All right, guys, to the unassuming eye, obviously you're probably thinking this looks like a, a spider, <laughs> but obviously this is like a black crab. It's like the spider of the ocean. How authentic would you say? This is just how they would eat it in Isan, pretty much? Yeah, pretty much. Oh my God. Yeah. All right, rounding out round one, we've got the crying tiger. In Thai, you were telling me this is called Seolonghai? Seolonghai, yes. Yeah. Crying tiger. Listen, you can hear the state crying. That's why they call it a crying tiger. Yeah, a, a little bit of a morbid thought that you hear a tiger crying, but hey, tiger's got emotions too, guys. Be careful with this one. This has a bit of flavor. It actually, it's bile. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna bile. try it. <laughs> no, let me try the bitterness. I'm gonna see how this goes. So it's gonna give you a different flavor. Woo! So you might want to get used to that. Mmm. Yo, it is bitter right away. I might, I, might, I might more stick with the traditional jiao. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm sticking with the traditional. I am surprised that some of these fusion steakhouses haven't added kind of a crying tiger flavor. I see them add different flavors, but I'm like, man, they gotta hit them with some crying tiger marinade. 
All right, you guys, that does it for round one, but we're not done here at Sab Sab. I'm telling you, when I was growing up, the Thai food I got exposed to, it was good, but it wasn't like great to me because it always tasted like kind of like Chinese food with more peppers in it. But man, I'm telling you, once I got exposed to Isan, just expanded my mind. All right, you guys, we have arrived at round two at one of the best Thai restaurants in all of North America. Wow. Tab tab. Brian, what are we Yo, looking at? What kind of prawn, what planet did you get this from? <laughs> well, it was hard to find these prawn, but we, we found them. The river prawns. Oh my what? gosh. They're on the medium size. Oh my Dude. goodness. So these are imported from Thailand. Yes. Oh man, they took a long Jeez. trip here. I feel like they got bigger in the time that they left. Um, all right, so how do we eat this? What's the best way, man? Because this thing is huge. It's uh, gigantic. You can crack it up like a, a lobster. You just... Wow, wow. Oh, and guys, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this tail meat. I'm gonna dip it in the juices up front because you know that's how we do. Hit them with yeah, a little like bit of said, seafood gotta, sauce. Gotta get a little bit of the, the head protein. David, David, you want? how are you doing over there? Yeah. You want to, I'm, I'm just gonna drizzle on. That's it. Thai river prawns. At tab tab. You know, sometimes when you get the giant prawns, you're a little disappointed because it's dry. This was juicy, man. I. Oh my gosh. Listen, guys. I know we're in the northeast right now, but I'm I'm taking the river prawns over the lobster right now. My God. Woo. Listen, guys. This is one of the best restaurants that I've ever eaten at. I'm being dead serious right now. This place is incredible. Look at that. Straight from Thailand. Oh my gosh. Woo! All right, you guys, next up part of round two, we've got a, uh, a drink and we've got catfish wrapped in a banana leaf. Brian, what, what is this drink? Oh, it's gel margarita. So essentially, we're using the gel sauce, which is tamarind, lime juice, uh, palm sugar. All right. So this is some new school and old school because David, while you're sipping on that modern 2023 margarita, you know what I got right here? Oh mm. man. This pork, pork belly, bamboo shoots, um, all steamed together in a nice little package for you. Mmm. Isan food, they know how to do bamboos too. Brian, you got another cocktail here. What's this one? Oh, uh, this is the Marco Julep. So basically, it's a lime leaf uh, that we marinate with uh, gin. Let me try that. Infused, exactly. That's good. That's smooth. The only reason why I cough, it's got a lot of citrus in there. <laughs> Whoa. Wow, even the cocktails are hitting you from different levels. You know, that's what I'd say. Thai food is so popular because it's sweet, it's sour, it's citrusy, it's bitter all at the same time. I never had this before in my life. Wow. What this are we looking is, at? This is very traditional uh, Nam Prik Prat uh, Fried egg with a cha om leaf. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then you have the Prat which is a macro, which is grilled. Okay, so I'm just going to take right. a piece of this, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you just didn't want to explain it anymore. You said just taste it. Oh my god, what is this? Huh? That's a Thai egg. Plant. This is mm -hmm. a Thai egg. Oh my goodness, guys. Nam Prik Prat this is like we in the mountains. <laughs> right. I love how the vegetables are steamed. So like this kind of little cabbage that you have here, it's very, very soft. And I think it's a nice switch up from the raw wraps that we're used to doing. Yo, I love this egg omelet. Mm. Thai egg omelets, man. They might be the best in the world. Oh. Moving on, Brian, what do we got here? This is a dish that I think I want to say for sure I've had before, but even the way it looks is a little different. Uh, yes, this is pra uh, Browning Manau, which is a steamed branzino in a lime broth. Andrew, how are you holding up? Because I'm telling you, <gasps> the Muay Thai elbows, uh, I feel like I'm in a fight with uh, Rotang. <laughs> Rod Tang. <laughs> pra Manau. Manau. Lime soup fish branzino. Wow. You guys made this one sweet. Mmm. I taste a lot of sweetness. I, sweet I taste the lime. Mmm. Damn it, Brian, it's not right that a restaurant should be hitting this many home runs, man. <laughs> it ain't right. <laughs> it's not right. Oh, man. I'm gonna eat it. I, I put it on top of my little sticky rice, which I love to do. I love it, man. I love what you guys did. Uh, Cause I've had this dish previous times and it was a little sour for me, but you guys sweetened it up. Wow. Listen guys, I don't know if you guys have ever had like sweet meat from fish. I know in sushi, sometimes it tastes sweet. I'm telling you, no. this fish is sweet. 
This is the best version of this dish I ever had. That is so good. I'm telling you guys, you guys are still eating cheeseburgers? Are you kidding me? All right, you guys, to round out round two, we have been eating an incredible feast here at Top Top. What are we looking at, Brian? This is Ling Sap. So it's the pork spine. The other sport, pork spine soup that uh, we like is the Korean uh, yukte jang, right? Or gamjatang. Oh, gamjatang. That's what I meant. Oh. All right, you guys, this is Ling Sap Sap pork neck stew Thai version. My goodness, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Salty, sweet, a little, uh, I, I feel that lime juice coming through. Oh my God. Oh! Don't drug test me right now. I'm gonna fail it. Don't drug test me, guys, even though I don't do drugs. <laughs> Good. Oh! Feel like I'm on Hot Ones right now, Isan edition. Uh -huh. Trying to eat a lot of delicious Isan food and talk at the same time. It's very difficult, guys. <laughs> What we're trying to accomplish here, okay? Hey man, I know a lot of, you know, especially people in the younger generation, you guys enjoy substances. Come get some substances here, legally. D D David's trying to say, you don't have to go to those substances. Just come to Tab Tab and get that, get that Tab Tab yeah, right a, here. This is a dare program. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, Brian, <clears throat> please explain what we're looking at here. This is Tom Sum, guys. It's, uh, we chopped a uh, whole chicken. We chopped it. And uh, we... we Broth them up with uh, young tamarind leaf, uh, galango, oh. lemongrass. Galango? Yeah. Sounds mm. like a Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, what do you call it? It could be another term for it, blue ginger. Oh, oh that definitely sounds like a substance. <laughs> what are we, hey, Let me guys, some of that blue ginger. One grams. thing I got to note, guys, sometimes you'll look at a Thai dish and be like, all right, that's not that spicy. Just watch out for these little buggers here, okay? When you see the little Thai chili, just know that it packs a punch. And you might take a bite that's not spicy, but if you have this in one of your bites, it, it how, all how of a sudden becomes spicy. Tom Som Kai. Tom Som Kai. Mmm. Wakes you up, right? Oh, man. You guys know uh, guy in, in Cantonese is the same word. Yeah. Chicken. <laughs> I love that you guys use dark meat. Chicken thigh right here, skin on. I'm telling you guys, there's a reason <coughs> why Pete Wells gave this place three out of four. He rarely ever does that. Oh, is this my favorite dish? Mm -hmm. Hot This is. All right, you guys, our last two dishes here at Tap Tap is a caprao, but this is a different type of caprao, Brian. Uh, what, what's different about it, man? You told me it's the devil is in the basil leaves. Yes, we, we, uh, we chopped the beef we hand chopped it this is a ribeye and uh, we saute with fresh garlic uh, Thai chili uh, which is bird chili and then we use hot basil this a, a kropow a lot of people have a had a kropow this is a common dish but they doing it differently but I would here. say this is common in the sense that it just got common recently right. most people were still on uh, pad Thai to pad CU pad Ki Mao and then kropow <laughs> is this the best kropow I've ever had let's try it it's different. The ribeye is delicious, ma'am. It's different. Guys, yes, yes, Zab Zab does serve a pad thai. Yes, they do have a caprao. You guys get it right here. Mmm. There's more layers, and those layers are great layers. Last but not least, Ed, what are we doing here at Top Top? Ryan, this is a uh, salt baked fish, but man, what do you guys call it? Uh, me and Pra Pao. Oh my gosh, and you can see the salt right here. I've had a dish like this before where they pack it with salt and then they bake it. Right. It's delicious. What is the salt supposed to do for the fish? It gives a, a flavor uh, inside the, uh, the, the meat, the mm. body of the, the fish. Oof. Me and Pra Pao. Pra. I can't think of any better dish to end off this meal here at Tab Tab. I mean, like we said, guys, you know, Thailand has so many wonderful regions of food, central, south, north, northeast. Isan is northeast. It borders Laos. A lot, a lot of crossover, maybe 90%. Delicious mountain-driven dishes. They don't taste like anything you've ever had before. Yep. My God. And, and, and to hear about the origin story of Tab Tab, even the Woodside location where you guys just had your Isan chef cook up a family meal 
And then that family meal you guys loved it so much, you were like, oh man, let's just change the concept of one of our other restaurants into a tab tab and base it around his dishes. I mean, I think that's an amazing story. And, and that's, the, that's the beautiful thing about it, you know? Um, and I'll tell you this, like sometimes food can be that simple. Just a nice salt baked fish with some good sauce. That's all you need. I mean, they're importing a lot of this stuff from Thailand, from very difficult to reach regions. I mean, your guys' supply chain is, is, is not easy, right? All right, you guys, we just left Tab Tab, and that is Northeastern Isan food, but we had to check out a spot that is doing Chiang Mai style food, just so you guys can get some compare and contrast. Plus, we gotta get uh, this Saoi sausage in here. This is done in the grilled Chiang Mai style. Now, the big difference between Chiang Mai food than Isan food from Bangkok food to, you know, Southern Thai food is that it's more salty and bitter and less spicy. So this is actually my first time ever trying this gang haul and this is my very first time having sa oi nem prick num specifically with the green sauce from chiang mai like we said it's very interesting because chiang mai and isan are both very uh high up in northern thailand but they do have different flavor profiles because one is the northeast and one is just considered the north um as you can see we got all these accessories to eat with the uh, sa oi and nam prick num I am telling you guys, if you guys have not had Northern Thailand food, whether it's Isan or Chiang Mai style, man, you are missing out. This is probably one of the most best cuisines in the entire world, to be honest. My goodness, we got the Nam Prick Nam right here. Putting it on the cucumber. Put a little bit of that. Put a little bit of this. Put a little pork rinds. I'm gonna even put a piece of squash in there. My goodness, this is the Big Mac of Sa Oi Nam Prik Nam from Chiang Mai. Next up from Chiang Mai, we are looking at Gang Hall. This is a dry curry stir fry using um, rice noodles. You've got other things in here. I could see uh, appearance wise, this just looks like kimchi, but it's not. This is my very first time having this dish. So much bamboo essence from the stir fry in here, guys. My goodness, Gang Hall from Chiang Mai. Honestly, the flavor profiles of this Chiang Mai Gang Hall remind me the most of Yunnan food. Uh, Yunnan is a part of China where a lot of people said the original people who sort of populated Northern Thailand possibly came from the Zhuang people. And I can actually see the linkage. And uh, it's so cool to see these border areas that border other areas, they're always gonna have different influence. Just like Isan has so much influence with Lao food. Probably one of those well-known dishes from Chiang Mai, which I just realized that it's from Chiang Mai, is the cow soy. Now, this is like a curry chicken noodle with different types of noodles. One's fried on top and one's just boiled on the bottom. Now, the origins of this dish are actually really interesting. It's actually called a chin ha dish, which means it's from the Yunnanese people who came and settled Northern Thailand in the mid 19th century. So it does have Chinese roots, but specifically from that particular group of people in China, the Yunnanese, which oftentimes are also Muslim. Guys, look at this curry noodle fried, always using the dark meat. Oh my gosh, that chicken has fallen off the bone. Why did it just fall off like that? That was too easy. That was too easy. Oh my gosh, I like it now because now I can kind of like shred it up. Get the two types of noodles and chicken in one bite. You're tripping, bro. If you haven't had this, you're tripping. I mean, the reason why that we're coming here, guys, is to just show you that there is so much more besides just like, you know, Bangkok style food. Because now Thailand is kind of being represented, you know, of all of its regions of food. Because to be honest, it is really good and there actually is a lot of undiscovered food or I guess I should say unpopularized food in the Western world right now. And by the way, yes, if you're wondering how, why I'm using chopsticks for a Thai dish, it's because the roots of this dish are Chinese. So, you know, it's a noodle soup at the end of the day. You got to use chopsticks on a noodle soup, but everything else you can use forks or your hand.